Hey y'all, this is Sean Gerber. Thanks for listening today. But before we get started, I wanted to update you on the launch of my CISSP Cyber Training Membership for my listening audience. On March 5th, 2023, I began offering my monthly CISSP membership at a 60% off my already low price. This introductory offer is for $19 a month for the first year. With that insanely inexpensive price, you will be able to get all of my CISSP content, practice exam questions, all my current and upcoming curated content, and finally, me. As I'm growing my products and services for my site, you will be on the ground floor to take advantage of an offer that will never, ever come back again. So if you're planning on taking the exam in 2023, or if you want to learn more in cybersecurity, this will be the time for you to make a life and career altering decision for you and your family. This amazing offer is only available until April 1st, 2023. And after that, it will be going back up in price at the still amazing price of $47 a month. So I highly recommend that you don't delay and sign up today. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Reduce Cyber Risk and CISSP Training Podcast, where we provide you the training and tools you need to pass the CISSP exam the first time. Hi, my name is Sean Gerber, and I'm your host for this action-packed, informative podcast. Join me each week as I provide the information you need to pass the CISSP exam and grow your cybersecurity knowledge. All right, let's get started. Last question in these practice questions. Question number 10. Layering of security protections and or various network resources is commonly called A, the seven layer OSI model, AKA burrito. Don't, it's not on the test. Burrito's not on the test. Don't worry about it. But it's my personal thing, burrito. B, honeypot. C, defense in depth. Or D, none of the above. So again, layering protections uh, and or various network resources are called the seven layer burrito, honey pots, defense in depth, or none of the above. Well, when you've got layered protections, that would call along the lines of defense in depth. So by layering these security protections or network resources, you can create a defense in depth strategy that will help you and help protect your network. So again, you always wanna look at various defenses while you're putting this out, because you never know what's gonna happen. The more defenses you have, the better off your network's going to be. Hey, all this is Sean Gerber with CISSP Cyber Training, and we are gonna be talking about CISSP exam questions. So we're gonna roll into some of these questions that you can get at CISSP Cyber Training. So if you're listening to this, you're either listening through a podcast or through YouTube, but you'll be able to get access to these questions and many more on at CISSPCybertraining.com. So kind of throwing them out here, you can kind of, we'll just walk through them step by step and then go from there. So CISSP exam question 11, Uh, you are concerned about the risk that an avalanche poses to your $3 million shipping facility. Okay, so now you're thinking about, you possibly have disaster recovery situation. Based on your expert opinion, you determine that there is a 5% chance that an avalanche will occur each year. Now you may get that information from someplace, I don't know where, but there's a place that probably can tell you that 5% chance of having an avalanche each year. Experts advise you that an avalanche would completely destroy your building and require you to rebuild on the same land or same mountain. Uh, 90% of the $3 million value of this facility is attributed to the building and 10% is attributed to the land itself. What is the single loss expectancy of your shipping facility to an avalanche? So when you're looking at this question, the thing you want to look at is the $3 million single loss expectancy, SLE. And you also want to understand what is the uh, A, B, and your EF. So basically the expected frequency of when it's going to occur and so forth. All right. So your answer is, or question is, 3 million, or I should say question, answer, 3 million, 2.7 million, 270,000, or 135,000. So what is your single loss expectancy, again, based on five 5% of the time you're going to have this issue and that the fact that $3 million is going to be the value of this facility. So the answer is $2.7 million. Now understand that the SLE, your single loss expectancy is the product of the AV and the EF. 
Okay, from this scenario, you'll know that the AV, the actual value, is $3 million. And the EF, which basically means the expectance frequency of this, is 90%. So based on that same thing, the same land could be built on, right? You're not, the unless it's a mountain that totally goes away, you're, you're gonna be able to rebuild on that. So you're looking at that 90% of that $3 million, right? So based on that, this yields an, a single loss expectancy of $2.7 million. So it's important that you just kind of understand that the, the whole land didn't go away. And that's a gotcha that will happen is you'll real quickly, you'll glob onto the $3 million and go, well, hey, it's $3 million. It would be A. But no, you can rebuild on that specific land unless the mountain itself is totally gone. Now, one thing to think about is, is if you had like on a, sh a seashore and you were had your facility on the sand and you had the foundation was there on this sand and a tsunami came in and took out basically where your building was at and let's say it became part of the ocean then you, obviously you couldn't rebuild uh so that's something you'd want to consider again that's where your key key thing is to focus on that aspect you need to know the the formula but you also need to understand those little nuances that are actually in the question itself cissp exam question 12. what unit of measurement should be used to assign a quantitative values to the assets in the priority identification phase of the business impact assessment. So there's a lot going on here. So you got a BIA, which is your business impact assessment. You're determining what should be your priority as you're doing this assessment. And you're looking at qualitative or quantitative values for that. So first one is monetary. Second is ut utility. Three is importance. And the fourth one is time. So the answer is A, monetary. The quantitative portion of this priority identification should assign asset values in monetary units or in monetary form. You, you can't assign those in a utility form or an importance form. Now importance could be potentially in there, but when you're dealing with quantitative, that is a number, that is an actual value. Qualitative would probably fall into the importance aspect of this. So just kind of think about the question. When they want quantitative, they're looking at specific numbers. And hence, that is why the monetary aspect is such an important factor. Thanks so much for joining me today on my podcast. If you like what you heard, please leave a review in iTunes, as I would greatly appreciate your feedback. Also, don't forget the 60% of my membership at the CISSP Cybertraining.com will be ending the 1st of April, 2023. So sign up today for this once in a lifetime sales event. Thanks again for listening. See ya.